I see that uh, I'm representing the private sector today. Um, and I will be presenting um, what my company does within sustainable production mostly. We are uh, have some consumer products that I think you will recognize, but most I will be talking about how we address sustainability within our company. Um, my name is Johan Wieder and I work as a senior sustainability specialist within Axon Nobel. How many in here know Axon Nobel? Oh, great. Not many recognize the guy, but uh, sometimes you recognize our brands. Um, so I, I work within a, a corporate group on sustainability, uh, setting up and reporting on our sustainability targets. Um, Axon Nobel, we, we uh, are active worldwide with a focus on Europe and Asia. Um, and we are the biggest chemical company in Sweden. Some of these brands I hope you recognize. You may have painted your house with Nordsjö or your boat with international paint. Or you may have some Yuzu salt in your kitchen. But we are also present in a lot of other products that we use daily, such as cement, such as asphalt, such as your mobile phones, such as your hairspray. Um, basically all around us. Um, what do we stand for? What are we talking about today? We're talking about sustainability. We're also talking about innovation. This guy is our founder, and we want to keep his legacy of innovation. But we also have a strong um, drive on sustainability. We've been number one on Dow Jones Sustainability Index for six years of the last 11. We are number one right now in the chemical industry. Uh, which shows kind of how we work and our drive and engagement on sustainability. For those who don't know Dow Jones, it's um, one of the, the oldest and uh, most distinguished indices on sustainability, meant for um, financial institutes, so, so investors basically. What kind of company do we want to be? I will get back to some of what Ida said uh, previously. But sometimes we talk about uh, being brave and uh, maybe setting ourselves some BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals. Um, maybe they are not so much, but we are the world's first paints and coatings company to have scientifically based targets uh, where we want to have, we are aiming for zero carbon in our use of energy, zero waste in our use of materials, and zero harm from our products. We use chemicals. When you hear chemical, it's something hazardous, right? Well, it exists all around us, and it's the basis for everything we have around us. But it should not cause any harm. Um, I want to start by some global financial implications uh, that is uh, currently happening in the world, and that is quite um, important for us as a business and the private sector in general. We see that it is now, uh, environmental pollution is now impacting China quite a lot, considering that their annual growth in GDP is about 7%. Their environmental pollution is now decreasing that by, well, half. It should have been over 10% if they didn't have so much environmental pollution. We know that above uh, more than a million Chinese die every year from, from air pollution. And this will curb the growth for China. We know that this will impact the global economy. Climate change in particular, there's a lot of, of, uh, of work going on in, in addressing this right now. And from a poll done by the World Economic Forum, they found that ex 750 experts addressed catastrophe caused to climate change as the biggest potential threat to global economy. So this is, is really uh, a big threat, which I think a lot of companies are not addressing or even aware about. I personally think that freshwater resources is the primary concern, but of course climate change affects freshwater resources a lot. 
And we can actually see that because we have actually a couple of sites who are not now producing anything because of polluted freshwater resources that has to, to be delivered to other stuff than, than we can use them for. So it is, it is causing us uh, financial implications and it's something that we have to address when we invest in a site, when we build a site somewhere in that region, what's going on? Can we expect this site to be producing what we <laughs> want to produce in the next 30 years? This also causes financial institutions to address this. How do we risk assess this? How do we put this into our risk assessment? Uh, and there is um, a task force on climate-related financial disclosures that came out with a report this summer with that addresses recommendations for business and for society how to address climate risks. And it is being taken up by, by a Carbon Disclosure Project, for example. So it is something that will be impacting us as a company also. How do we view companies? What is a company? Is it just, you know, our financial borders? This is what we are legally um, required to, to address? Or do we address the whole value chain? And more and more, we actually compete with the whole value chain, not as a sole company. Um, and then what we want to achieve is also, of course, to reuse our materials, making them stay within our society. And the small parts that need to go out to nature it shouldn't cause any harm to nature. Um, and this means that we have to set up cooperations. We have to work together to make this happen. And I will, I will talk a little bit about how we, how we an eye-opener for our company on, on this aspect. But of course, in a societal con context, you have plenty of these. There's lots of value chains, lots of life cycles, lots of material flows in a society. So if we are to address this together, um, all these flows to make it a circular economy, which are where I'm aiming at, of course, um, we need a legal framework. We talked about brave politicians. We need a legal framework, and I think most companies would say, as long as we have a framework, we can work within it, but set the framework. We need knowledge, we need research to make this happen. We need to know what materials can we use, how can we use them, how do we know what's in the products to be able to recycle them. We need to address us as consumers. Ida brought this up, all of us in the room. What is our role here? How do we contribute and how do we not contribute to these circular flows? To make all the kegs in the cogwheel work together in this circular economy. So how did our company come to work with, in li with life cycle assessment and with the life cycle perspective so much? Um, we started working with life cycle assessment in 92 actually, um, but it was not until 07 that we showed this to top management in the company, realizing that our contribution to climate change is 15% of the total of our products. 40% is upstream and 45% is with our customers, consumers, end of life. So, and our focus was of course in the at the start, the 15%. So this made us, in, in, that, in the strategy that we set in 2008, to address, okay, let's address raw materials at least, because there we have an impact. We are a large company, probably the largest customer of a lot of our suppliers, so we can put some pressure. In the last strategy, in 2012, we also included our customers, end of life, because that's where we have the strongest impact, and we want to develop products to our customers sustainable products, more sustainable products, which we did through what we called eco-premium solutions. Um, we have together with a lot of other chemical companies um, within the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, 
developed what we call sustainable portfolio assessment. Um, and we used to work with, with, so far we've worked with Eco Premium Solutions, and with those, we look at the whole value chain of our products, and within the whole value chain, we address seven different uh, concerns or sustainability criteria. And we compare ourselves always to the mainstream product in the market, which means that we need to be on our toes and develop our products all the time, because otherwise they won't be eco premium. So this is kind of the, the primary uh, target that we have. We have eco performers, where we are now addressing something that is mainstream, but it's not that significantly better. But it still has a strong sustainability aspect to it, because the market is such, and you have, you have uh, less sustainable products. Performance, normally normal mainstream products, but then we also want to address, okay, we always talk about the good stuff. That's what companies do, right? We want to sell the products. But of course, we also have what we call transitioners, products that we, where we see that there might be a sustainability concern with this product in, in, in the, the longer term. So we want to move the, away from those. We also have priority products. So we have a system called priority substance management where we address all of the chemicals that we handle in the company and we, we score them for risks, for toxicity, but also for social issues. So societal concerns. All of you know the, the debate about bisphenol A it's been on, on, on the media for a long time, where the US say that, well, there's no real problem. You can use it in, in food containers, whilst in, in Europe we say, mm, let's get rid of it. So there is, there is a discrepancy in the science, but we say there's a social concern around it, let's get rid of it. And it was actually 70% of one of our businesses it was based on epoxy resin, where, which is based on epo uh, bisphenol A, and there might be some, some small residues in there, so let's get rid of it. And these are the type of priority substances that we, that we address here. I don't know if you know of the SIN list from the Chem Chemsec in Gothenburg, so we address those. We will have a meeting with those in December. Um, and and uh, where we actually use that SIN list to find out, okay, which are the priority substances that we need to get rid of? And all of this to drive our sustainability portfolio towards more sustainable products. Uh, now I've talked about the downstream, so all our products. Now I want to talk about the upstream. What do we do with suppliers on the supplier side? Um, well, major companies have what we call a code of conduct. How do we conduct our business? And all of our suppliers are uh, required to sign an agreement, a vendor policy, to say that they also agree to these terms of, of conducting business. But on top of that, we, because some businesses, in, especially in developing countries, they, they have not as stringent regu regulations, requirements on them, you might say, so they may not live up to the standard that we require. But instead of saying, okay, we can't have you as a supplier, then maybe we can't have 90% of the companies in certain regions are, as suppliers, and we need that. So we go to them, and together we look at how they conduct their business, and we set up an action plan in, in, in cooperation, what they can do to get better. And then we come back to see, okay, are they following up? Are they doing what we actually agreed upon? And if they don't, okay, then they can't deliver to us. But a lot of companies do, and I've had some success stories where, where a company actually says, well, you know, my competitors didn't. Good for me. They're gone. Uh, because I know we, we are not the only ones doing this. Major companies do something similar. And you have to be, you have to be addressing this as, as a company. Um, we do, um, this is called um, Together for Sustainability. So we, a couple of big chemical companies realized that, well, you know, we, we go out to suppliers, we send them questionnaires, we go visit them to see if everything is working fine. And all of us do that. So we set up a group who do that for us. 
So there's one person or two persons coming, and we all get uh, the results of those reviews and, and, uh, and scorings. And then we have suppliers of our key raw materials. And with those, we have a closer cooperation. We talk about life cycles, we talk about our products, we talk about developing, what kind of raw materials can we use, what do you have, what are you developing in your pipeline. And we also collect, I, would, I want to say eco-footprints, or, or um, environmental performance of their, their products, but usually it's carbon footprints. It's a major thing. And right now we are, we are including about 200 uh, carbon footprints from our suppliers into our life cycle assessments. That's the basis for our, our carbon reporting and our carbon footprint. Suppliers. Within our business, these are examples of how we work. Within our, our business, we, we make investments. We, two minutes. Oh, sure. Um, then I think I'll skip this one. <laughs> but we include, we include a sustainability assessment in all our investments. And you saw previously why also. We also include carbon pricing now in this, because the finance guys also need to get it, right? Um, Ida talked about it. Cooperation and trust. We see all these. There's a lot of stuff to do. And we, we are talking about circular economy. Uh, but I would like to say that you need this cooperation. You need the partnerships. You need trust to make all of this work. Um, these are some of the partnerships that we, we are working with. We, since we've since 92, we've been working with the Swedish Life Cycle Center on knowledge around life cycle, uh, life cycle assessments with a lot of Swedish companies. Uh, we work within the Haga Initiative to try to push the climate agenda within Sweden, and a lot of others. What do we want to be? I think, um, who do we want to be? Ida, Ida, Ida touched upon it, or talked about it, I guess, <laughs> the theme. I want to show a picture that I think addresses it. It's a problem, right? Isn't it? And you talked about leaders, and we're all leaders, yes. But a lot of times you see this, and we all recognize it in ourselves. Sometimes we are not so brave. But that's what we need. We need brave leadership. We need brave politicians. The BHAGs, where are the BHAGs? Where, where do we see the vision? Um, we want to see the vision of this. We, we see all of these dark clouds, and everything is going down the drain. But, we, okay, what's, what's that society? We talked about it in the group now. What's that, what's that society we want to see? And can we stand up for that and be brave? It's not only for business, it's also for, for society and our politicians. Thank you.